Well, thank you both for coming and thank you everyone uh, for, for coming to watch. Uh, we're here to talk about Bitcoin, the premier asset in crypto. Uh, with us, we have uh, Fisher and uh, Jacob and wanted to just start off by having you both introduce yourselves and, and just give a brief overview of, uh, of the company uh, that you work for. And I know both of you work very closely together. Uh, we'll get into that, but we'll love an overview of Babylon and, and one of Lombard. Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Fisher Yu. I'm the CTO of Babylon Labs. Uh, Babylon is most uh, well known for its uh, Bitcoin staking protocol, which allows Bitcoin asset to be staked to provide slashable proof of stake like security to any blockchain and roll ups and earn staking reward. Uh, Bitcoin staking is trustless and self custodial, which means you don't give your Bitcoin away to anyone else. So there's no counterparty risk. So Bitcoin staking is the third native use case of Bitcoin. Staking is the new hodling. Thank you. Awesome. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Jacob Phillips, one of the co-founders of Lombard. You can think of Lombard as two things. We are a Bitcoin bridge, fundamentally secured by the Lombard Consortium, uh, a bridge operated by some of the biggest names in the space, OKX, Wintermute, DCG, folks like that, and a liquidity primitive. So you probably know us from LBTC, a Bitcoin liquid staking token. Uh, users deposit Bitcoin into the protocol, all of it gets staked into uh, Babylon. Um, and then we meant a liquid representation of that Bitcoin. LBTC is, um, you know, about $1.7 billion in TVL, by far the biggest LST. You can find it on all the biggest protocols in ETH mainnet. And as of a couple of months ago, all the biggest protocols on SWE. Great, thank you. Um, we're seeing a lot of innovation happening uh, in Bitcoin right now, especially around bringing uh, Bitcoin uh, more on chain in, in terms of bringing it to other chains and finding more use cases. Uh, why is now the, the right time for the shift? Why do you think all this activity seems to be happening now? Yeah. Can, can I take this one maybe? Sure. So I, I wrote a piece about this right around the time of Babylon um, made net launch. And long story short, it was a lot of things all happening at the same time. No one kind of contributed to it, but you had off-chain yields dry up after all of the centralized lenders blew up. You had Bitcoin holders first for the first time starting to expect to, um, to uh, rather... Um, uh, get excited about expressivity and doing things on chain. You saw like the explosion of runes and um, and broader inscriptions movements where people were like launching meme coins on Bitcoin. There was like money to be made by innovating in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And so all of this led us to, you know, the beginning of uh, this year when people started getting excited about Babylon. And for the first time, not only did you see retail starting to think about like, oh, I can do with more with my Bitcoin. Uh, you finally had institutions start to do this. So in, like Bitcoin staking was the perfect sort of Trojan horse for bringing Bitcoin out of cold storage into more active environments. So you put all those catalysts together on the back of excitement around Eigenlayer, which I think made it really easy for users to understand how, you know, how big of a, of a protocol that Babylon and Bitcoin staking could become. It made it so easy for Lombard to go pitch this to users as, hey, stake your Bitcoin and take it and go do other stuff in, in DeFi. So now, you know, uh, what is it? Maybe nine months after Babylon and Lombard launch, you have um, the biggest options trade ever um, uh, happening on chain was collateralized by staked Bitcoin. You have per protocols integrating, soon centralized exchanges. You have um, Bitcoin LSTs being traded and used across all the biggest DeFi protocols. So Bitcoin became cool again for the first time in DeFi, uh, thanks to all of these kind of compounding catalysts. Yeah. yeah, from my perspective, I think Bitcoin is getting mainstream adoption, right? getting mainstream uh, values and users, but once pe people acquire Bitcoin, they realize, hey, I can't do anything with my Bitcoin. So it's most of the Bitcoins are sitting there idle, doing nothing. So by inventing Bitcoin staking, we show the world that actually Bitcoin can be put into work, provide utility to the rest of the crypto world, and earn some uh, staking reward. So yeah, so what we enable is this low risk default Re reward generation infrastructure for Bitcoin so that P uh, Bitcoin holders feel much more confident to take their Bitcoin out of cold wallet and work. Now, Bitcoin doesn't have its own native uh, staking. So this is one of the key innovations yep. for, for Babylon. So it'd be helpful, I think, if you can explain, you know, how does that work? How can you take Bitcoin and, uh, and, and, and stake it and, and use it to secure, you know, other chains? How does that process work? Okay, sure, I can explain uh, in like three hours, but here is the high level intuition. So what does staking mean? Staking means you uh, lock you, your uh, digital asset there to uh, become the validator of a network to secure it. 
Okay, why does it provide security? It's because if you, in your validation, you do wrong thing, for example, you, you try to fork the chain or anything like that, your stake can actually be slashed. So staking is useful and it's crucial for the crypto world in, in terms of security because the asset can be slashed. So what we essentially achieved is to make Bitcoin that is staked slashable in case the staker attacks the blockchains and roll ups that it, it is securing. So this way we make Bitcoin staking a meaningful a genuine staking security provider so that Bitcoin holders will be able to earn genuine staking reward from all the blockchains in Europe uh, they, are, they protect. Well, so once you decide to stake your Bitcoin yeah. um, on, on Babylon, if you do it via Lombard, you're able to mint a liquid staking token. Yes, correct. Uh, LBTC, which is yep. uh, now available on SWE as well. Yep. Um, so what new applications do you think now that you have you know, both staking and you have liquid staking, um, whether it's yield or security or something else. And Jacob, I think you touched a little bit upon, you know, all the different use cases, but maybe, maybe you can expand on, you know, a couple of the ones that you're most excited about that are now enabled by, by having the LST. Yeah. I mean, think of LBTC or liquid staked form of Bitcoin as just supercharged Bitcoin. It's bit, you know, one-to-one -one back Bitcoin plus some catalyst or some underlying yield that then, you know, juices up your ability to do things. So um, when we introduced this to the market, we saw some of the biggest protocols in the ETH ecosystem uh, abandon whatever other assets they were prioritizing for a full go to market on uh, Bitcoin. So this was like Pendle um, and Etherfi were two of the big ones that we partnered with. And, you know, what was exciting about this was for the first time you had Bitcoin at kind of at the center stage. The whole, you know, DeFi was traditionally built upon native tokens of, of big L1s. Uh, meanwhile, sexes were built entirely on Bitcoin, um, uh, you know, trading happened all on centralized exchanges. You have like Bitcoin pairs. Bitcoin was the original unit of accounts, even for perps. BitMEX was originally, um, you know, entirely denominated in, in Bitcoin. Same with um, Deribit. So all of these use cases are slowly uh, coming on chain. You know, I think we were missing some core pieces of infrastructure to give people the ability to build really good Bitcoin businesses. But now all, all of that's there. In the past, if you wanted to build a Bitcoin business, you basically had to build a centralized exchange or a custodian. You had to get licenses and regulation and um, do all this stuff that would be pretty risky. Now that we have non-custodial systems for staking and, um, and bridging, you can use an existing ecosystem like SWE to build fast um, you know, payments, uh, trading on chain, uh, perps, options, uh, anything you can do in DeFi, you can now do with Bitcoin. So um, it would be kind of silly if Bitcoin didn't end up becoming the, the core primitive within on-chain finance. And I think we're, we're well underway there. Now, I think a lot of us are excited because of all the possibilities and, and we're already starting to see Bitcoin make its way through this sweet DeFi e ecosystem. Um, but I think another reason perhaps why a lot of us are excited about this is because uh, Bitcoin was a, kind of the original thing that got us into the space to, to begin with. And so I um, wanted to see for both of you that are building companies in this space, you want to talk a little bit about, you know, when did you first discover uh, Bitcoin and, 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 you know, how did you get into it to begin with? Yes. I imagine much before you started the company, you were... Uh, <laughs> A, you know, yeah. you're intrigued somehow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, before Professor David Shea and I co-founded Babylon, we uh, did like three years of blockchain active research and consulting in the blockchain uh, space. And what we saw it is that the entire crypto space is very fragmented. Like the last DeFi summer ICO uh, boom, right? Uh, hundreds of chains, thousands of apps. We see that. We, but, so we envision a future where the crypto in the entire crypto space will become more united. Right. Then it needs a gravity center. What is the gravity center? Well, the best bet will it's Bitcoin. So we decided to uh, start it with Bitcoin, build towards a vision of a more united crypto world around Bitcoin, where Bitcoin supercharges the other networks, and the other networks like pay back the Bitcoin for some. On some returns, so like it's more united. So I think the vision so far uh, plays out quite well, especially given that Bitcoin is now getting mainstream adoption. So that Bitcoin as a big brother can really take the entire crypto space, crypto industry towards mainstream adoption. So that crypto will no longer be uh, like an exclusive cycle, but actually part of the mainstream world. Right. How about for you? Yeah. Before I was working on Lombard, I spent three years as an investor at a big fund. Uh, and we invested in everything from 
what became some of the biggest core DeFi protocols and, uh, you know, a lot of trash. And I remember I, I uh, sort of joined right before DeFi summer. I spent most of my time focused on DeFi. At the very end of my investing career, I was like getting a little bit jaded. We were like about to invest in NFT exchanges on Terra and uh, a bunch of very uh, random stuff. And so, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, I sort of serendipitously found my way back to Bitcoin. It just so happened that there was a great opportunity to sort of work with friends on a project that was going to change the game. When I was at, at Polychain, I had um, invested in a company called BadgerDAO, which last cycle tried to do a lot of the things that Lombard ended up doing this cycle. Maybe it was just a little bit too early, um, but it's been good to be back kind of true to fundamentals. I think the Bitcoin community is one of the most principled um, and all of the principles that you know people hold so near and dear, I think ties back into everything we do, being security first, prioritizing decentralization over centralized solutions. These are kind of things that were principles in the ETH DeFi ecosystem and are slowly being eroded away that I think Bithold, Bitcoin holders demand from day one. So um, it's been fun to, uh, to get back to the basics. Yeah, and there's a lot of other companies that are now joining in the, in the fund. We'll start to see more um, products being built on, uh, on top of both of your protocols and, and, and just more people getting into the, uh, the space doing things with Bitcoin. Um, and so how do you see the space evolving over the next six to 12 months? Yeah, uh, I'm very happy to see more players joining the game. To, it actually really proves that Bitcoin, so-called Bitcoin Fi, yeah, it's, it's real and it is the future for the crypto industry. So we are very happy. For the next six to 12 months, I will, see, I will imagine more real like, uh, applications, like retailer-facing applications, more high-performance applications built on top of Babylon and Lombard. Yeah, and also the liquidity of Bitcoin will be further enabled yeah yeah i think in the next six to 12 months we're going to see a lot happen around bitcoin utilization in ways we haven't before we've sort of been in this stage of what i describe as activation where we're sort of bringing bitcoin out of cold wallets and letting higher risk capital try stuff out but you got to keep in mind you know babylon and lombard we're like nine month old protocols the fact that we've been able to have as much success as we had so far is um uh, you know, it, it, impressive, but I think it's just the beginning. So now that we have somewhat battle-tested primitives to build upon, you can start to think about building real businesses upon, uh, upon these different protocols. So, you know, uh, payments mechanisms may start to pop up. Um, I think Bitcoin trading is going to become big on chain. It's the biggest use case of, of uh, Bitcoin and centralized exchanges. If we think all assets and financial activity is going to come on chain eventually, Bitcoin trading on chain has to be one of those. Um, and then eventually, I think we'll get to this state where, like I was saying before, people will no longer think about building bit Bitcoin businesses with you know, centralized infrastructure and, uh, and you know, coordinating with all these like licenses and registrations. You'll be able to build a non-custodial Bitcoin business uh, like that. So you know, the next, next person building uh, you know, the Coinbase for Africa or some similar solution will be able to do it you know, directly from self-custody wallets rather than you know, worrying about uh, everything else. Yeah, great. Uh, well, it's it's incredible how much both of you have built just in, in nine short months uh, being in new protocols and to see all the traction behind it. And we're very excited to work with, with both of you and uh, continuing the work and, um, and, and working with SWE. So I wanted to thank you both for, for joining and uh, thank everyone for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.